Okay, get ready to travel without even leaving your seat. Yeah, armchair adventures, right. Exactly. This time, we're diving into something seriously visually stunning. Photography from the Isle of Wight. Think like charming seaside towns, those dramatic landscapes you always see in postcards. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Those rugged cliffs, the colorful beach huts. Yes. And all of it captured through the lens of a local artist, which adds a whole other dimension. Absolutely. It's one thing to see those picture-perfect scenes, but it hits differently when it's through the eyes of someone who knows the place like the back of their hand. It becomes personal. And that's what caught my eye with this photographer, Alfie in the Air Photography Gallery. Gotta love that name, right? It's like a whimsical children's book come to life. Hey, it does have a certain charm, doesn't it? But it's when you realize their gallery isn't just online. That's when it gets really interesting. It's right there, smack dab on the island, Union Street and Ride, to be exact. Oh, I didn't realize that. That changes things. It's like they're not just selling prints. Their gallery is part of the Isle of Wight experience itself. Exactly. Their photos become more than art. They're a local's perspective, a love letter to their home. It's, like you said, another dimension. Okay, so we're talking about the Isle of Wight, which I admit I mostly think beaches. Mm. But looking at Alfie and the Air's work, wow, they've photographed everything. Like, I'm seeing Ride, obviously, Sea View, Bembridge. Mm -hmm. But then there's places with amazing names like Scratchel's Bay and Black Gang. Have you heard of these places? Oh, absolutely. Scratchel's Bay is this hidden cove, almost untouched. It's like stepping back in time. And Black Gang, well, the name kind of gives it away. Dramatic cliffs, wild sea, bit of a smuggler's history if you're into that sort of thing. See, this is what I love. It's like you can practically smell the salt air just hearing those descriptions. Mm. But it's interesting, you mentioned Black Gang being rugged beauty, and then there's Bembridge, which is supposed to have these calm, peaceful shores. It's like they're capturing the whole spectrum of the island's personality. Exactly. And that's the beauty of photography, isn't it? It can evoke a feeling as much as it depicts a place. And the range of locations we're seeing here, from those popular beaches to inland spots like Carisbrook Castle, it tells us they're going for the island's diversity, not just the touristy facade. Totally. And their style seems to reflect that too, right? Like their website mentions capturing tranquility, adventure, and natural wonder. Something for everyone, I guess. Exactly. And that variety really speaks to their versatility as photographers. They're not just capturing landscapes. They're capturing moods and feelings. Like, think about what kind of images evoke tranquility to you. Hmm. Good question. I'm imagining, like, soft light, maybe a misty morning over the water, or even just a lone sailboat, you know, drifting across a still lake. It's peaceful just thinking about it. See, and that's what they're able to do. Capture that sense of peace and translate it into an image. That takes skill. And speaking of skill, did you notice they print and frame everything themselves right there in the gallery? Wait, seriously, I totally missed that. That's incredible. It's like, talk about dedication to your craft. It's one thing to have an eye for photography, but to then master the printing and framing process too. That's next level. Right. It really emphasizes that they're invested in the entire artistic process, from capturing the initial image to how it's ultimately presented. It's that attention to detail, that personal touch, that likely resonates with people who buy their work. Makes you wonder if they handpick the frames based on each photo, too. Like, do they envision the final product while they're still out there with the camera? Okay, now I'm just getting lost in the details. But I did notice something else on their website. They also have photos from their travels, places like Namibia and Dubai. That's a far cry from the Isle of Wight, wouldn't you say? Hey, you could say that. It's a testament to their adventurous spirit, right? But it also shows how much they value contrasting environments. They even talk about how Dubai's modern and vibrant feel differs from the Isle of Wight, almost like they're drawing parallels, finding connections between these seemingly opposite places. That's really fascinating. It makes you wonder if seeing those vastly different landscapes, experiencing those other cultures, influences how they see and photograph their own home. Do you think it's possible to rediscover familiar places through a traveler's lens? Absolutely. In fact, I think it's almost essential for any artist or anyone really to step outside of their comfort zone to experience new environments. It's like when you return home after a long trip, everything seems a bit brighter, a bit more nuanced. The way the light hits a familiar building might suddenly remind you of a bustling marketplace in Marrakech. Or a quiet path in the woods might evoke the vastness of the Sahara. That's such a powerful image. It's like you're not just taking a photo, you're capturing a memory, a feeling, a connection to another place in time. 
Precisely. And I think this is where Alfie and the Air really shines. They're not just showing us the Isle of Wight, they're sharing their unique perspective, shaped by their experiences both near and far. It really makes you realize the power a photographer has, right? They can oh. make us see familiar places, maybe even our own hometowns, with fresh eyes. Exactly. And taking a step back, it underscores the power of photography as a whole. It's not just documentation, it's storytelling, it's emotion, it's a way to connect with places and cultures in a way words often can't. It's like they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. Right. Sometimes, even more than that. Well said. Yeah. So if anyone out there is feeling a little wanderlust, even if you're not planning a trip to the Isle of Wight anytime soon, I highly recommend checking out Elfie in the Air. Their work is like a mini vacation for the soul. And who knows, maybe it'll inspire you to pick up a camera and start documenting your own surroundings. You might be surprised by the hidden gems you discover right in your own backyard. The world is full of extraordinary moments just waiting to be framed. Beautifully put. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep discovering, and as always, thanks for listening.